But we have the ability to think at a higher level. Those lower levels, the depression, being upset, remorse, shame, guilt, those are lower vibrational things. It's really true. We were created, and when we get centered, to be happy and joyous. And the thing that's standing in our way is the perception. So, these steps in this program is that perception change, and a lot of the focus here is, you know, it's a 12-step uh, meeting, and we do talk about all addictions, but a lot of times we focus on the food, so... With the food, too, it's a perception, perception change. Uh, you know, we can't resist it. You know, it's just like saying with anything in life, uh, you see somebody and you say, well, I shouldn't be angry at them, I shouldn't be mad, and you try to resist these feelings. We have a better way. We let that get centered, prayer meditation. I said, a lot of meetings I'll say, if you want to go out and do something, a lot of people say, a lot of times I'll mention, well, we can't do it. They say, look, they, they don't understand that they feel they have to take the self-will back and do it. And they say, how can you possibly do something if you don't take control and it's you who has to do it? Well, what I'm saying is this. I know in my life when I sit on the couch and get centered, then I'll be inspired to do things. Because what's holding me back is the ego and the self-centered fear. When we get into the self and the ego, when we try to do things and we make everything a trudge, and, but when we get centered... Then everything comes together and we see all joy and happiness. You know, and also I had perception is your world, but also I had another topic. It was uh, detached from the ego's lower level vibrational thinking. The lower levels of thinking. Also, you know, it's called the dark side. Um, you know, I know in Star Wars we joke about that sometimes. The dark side, right? Or the force. So which is it? You're on the dark side? Just think about it. It's the dark side when you're get upset or fear, self-centered fear, because you're coming from the self. And those are lower levels of thinking. It's about the things that it can affect us on the outside. And the joy and happiness is within here. So directly related to the food, and we were talking uh, before, and uh, uh, we, we, the word grace came up, amazing grace. And this thing is totally amazing. This whole concept and the 12 steps and the, the whole program, step one said, we're powerless, we can't do it. And as soon as I realized I was powerless, the whole world opened up to me. The whole answer to my addictions, to people, to food, to drugs, the alcohol opened up. Because when I realized I was powerless, I didn't try to control things. Most of our upset is, you know, it says in the book, in the big book, resentments and anger and fear. But resentment is number one. And think about it. Think about what you're, I would guarantee you most everything you're thinking about now is related to your relationships to people. Pretty much so. It's the ego. It's letting, you know, it's like feeling that you always have to be right and that if the ego doesn't want to die, if the ego thinks for a minute that it's, it's threatened, then we get into self-centered fear. It's called fear. Then we're paralyzed by self-centered fear. So we have humility. Humility. Do you realize by having humility, you know, somebody says, I have to be assertive, I have to go this, I have to, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, but humility is strength. The strength and humility, when you have humility and you, don't, and you get out of the self, then you can go out and do anything because you're not worried. It's, it's, the, it's the keeping us prison is the ego. If I go to this job interview, if I go say something at work, or if I feel I'm not doing my job right, usually it's these illusions in our mind, but we have a way out. And with our addiction here. So don't, get, don't fret about what you did this morning or yesterday. If you liked the video so far, press the like and subscribe button or a thing about the food we were talking about before the meeting, because we can start the day over being the present with that God consciousness. That God consciousness lets us, you know, people go along, they want perfection, and they always go back to square one. And a lot of times I had 10 things, great things happened to me in a day, and the one bad thing was the thing I dwelled on. So we can actually now, here's the, here's the point here, listen to this, you could have 10 bad things happen in your day and still be happy. How could that be? Think about that. You could have 10 bad things happen to you. You know, there could be a person, we could be have the best life in the world and be miserable. Think of it that way. How come a lot of people who are very well off and billionaires or whatever and, and they want to kill themselves and they're depressed and upset? You know, so and how come somebody who could be very poor and destitute and not have anything be happy? And how come the whole thing is, is that usually the things that are are, are, are the material things are keeping us out of entering what's called the kingdom and being happy and joyous. When we put our emphasis on those material things and when we get them, then we start to think, well, the way the answer to this is all about these material things, just like with the food. I'll go right back to the food. 
You know, in this society, we have so much food and the corporations and all of this poisonous stuff they put in addictive stuff. So we have it all there in front of us. We have that ability to have all of that. But on the other side is just as much devastation because we can't, we don't know how to handle it. Intuitively, we'll know when we work this program in steps. But our intuition now and our higher power became what the corporations told us, right? Uh, you know, all the salt, oil, and sugar, and all the garbage. If you like the video so far, press the like and subscribe button. So if you have that perception change and, hey, you got this today. Look at this for an orange, right? Pretty big. And the app, these are perfection and God made. Again, meditate on this. Think about this and think in relationship to the poisonous foods that for money the corporations are getting you hooked on. to like the local cocaine or crack dealer, right? And I have a banana here, okay? And also I have here pure water. Clarity. You want clarity in life? Here's clarity. The other stuff is going to clog your brain up, you know, mentally and physically. So the perception change is the only way to do it. As soon as you find yourself during the day saying, I have to do this way with our addictions, you're back into the, to the self. Now, it may work temporarily, but as soon as it, you stop doing what's called a diet or you stop trying to force yourself to, to get people to like you, how crazy is that, right? To, to have that go around life thinking that if people would only like me, then my life would be complete. People fail us all the time. We, you know, it says on page 99, we can't put our emphasis on people, but on a higher power of God consciousness. So anyway, um, what I wanted to also say, let me see what else we have here. So it's mainly the perception. I also, we had the phrase, we talked about turn the light switch on. So I guess where I'm going to all of this is that we right now can have that perception change. And we had you know, I just had this one reading because it was mentioned before the meeting for today. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to read like the first sentence where it talks about, it's on page 348. If you have this, it talks about amazing grace. Amazing grace, you know, how sweet the sound. Save the wretch like me. How desperate and miserable were we when we came in here. I was lost, but now, but now I'm found. I was blind, but not now I can see. We think we can see with the eyes, but we're really, really blind, you know. And that just reminded me to read on page, if we go to page 8 in Bill's story. Let me go to that. Uh, here's where Bill was, okay? And before he did the steps, and then we'll read for a second what he did after the steps. So Bill says here on page 8, and this is some way I would wake up and feel when I was, feel when I was in my addictions, alcohol, drugs, and food, and addiction to people, wanting them, depending on people, to like me to feel happy. That's the most insane thing of it all, right? So it says here, No words can tell of the loneliness and despair I found in the bitter morass of self-pity. Going back to the self, selfishness, self-centeredness. At least now I know where the problem was. Before I didn't know it was in my thinking. And again, the, the, uh, the thing here, the mission statement is perception is, is your world. Your whole world is your perception of it. So if you change perception, guess what happens? If you come from positiveness, happy, getting that real higher consciousness in you. Look, the truth is, is that that's the way we're meant to be. God or created and create, create us to be unhappy. Just like when we were children, we were happy. Certain things were in the present. But we misused self-will, run riot, as it says here. Uh, we misused it. So we're using the intellect to try to figure out situations. Why is that person not liking me walk out of the house? Or why has somebody uh, said this about me? That's what we try to analyze, figure out, and we're trying to figure out how we could do things better so more we'll get more material things, we'll get more money, more success, more people to like us. Or we latch on to them to be our higher power, just like we did with the addiction to food. So we definitely, definitely need that perception change. And the 12 steps is all about that. But anyway, let me finish this, and then I'll read that. Quicksand stretched all around me. I had met my match. I had been overwhelmed. Alcohol was my master. So here he says, food was our master. People were our masters. We could be freedom right. We could be free right now. That amazing grace, just le opening up, surrendering already. After all it is. So, but he says a few sentences down. I was soon to be catapulted and would like what I like to call the fourth dimension of existence. Now, as I'm reading this, a lot of a lot of you probably saying, you know, hey, this this doesn't make any sense. What is this all about? The spirituality. It is really, really true. I see when people read these particular. Uh, and do these steps and through the big book there's a perception change a new pair of glasses so you can it's the great 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 healer especially of our emotional never mind the physical things when we 
get healthy and get away from our addictions. You know, alcohol and drugs kill us, but food is even more devastation. So physically and mentally, what, what does it say? That when we straighten out spiritually, the mental and physical will be straightened out, right? That says it right in our book here. They knew it all. They figured it out. They figured out we were powerless. And even here, almost 100 years later, right? We, the doctors and scientists haven't figured it out. We haven't figured it out. How's it working to, for you up to now? Trying to figure it out, analyzing your problems, right? By analyzing, we're bringing ourselves into the problem. You're the problem, the solution. A solution is in these steps. Tell us, what does step three say? So on step three, it says, getting right to it, uh, page 63, as we felt new power flow in. So in order for new power to flow in, it needs room to come in, right? But what was there before? The ego. We were all filled up with the ego, the self-pride. Isn't that pride one of the seven deadly sins? I wonder why, right? Among, among them, gluttony, okay? So um, we felt new power flow in. We enjoyed peace of mind. We discovered we could face life successfully. We became conscious of his presence. Look, facing life for me successfully, what did that mean? Before it was all material and, 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 and getting people to like me and say, wow, Bob is this, he's that, or, or you know, success, money. It was with addictions, addictions, you know, more of a, the material thing. So, but what is it now? It's a spirituality. It's realizing real, the truth will set you free. The real truth in us is this joy and happiness. It's the source of us. We were created that way. And the way we know it is when we get out of the self, we can't help but being happy. Look, when you get humility and you get rid of the ego, you're going to be happy. You just are. Because the thing that's blocking you out, these defects of character, half the main one is pride. And that brings in a self-centered fear. So uh, it's, all, it's all right there for us. Uh, but a price had to be paid. It means giving up the old self. The ego doesn't want to die. And all these addictions and everything to do with that. So the third strip here goes, relieve me of bonds of self. All right, so that's what we had, that's the price we had to be paid. And it goes on page 64. Here we go. It says, this is going right to this fourth step here. On the very bottom, was it our self-esteem? How come all the time we hear the word self-pity, self-esteem? Our pocketbooks, our ambitions, you know, our personal relationships, including sex were hurt or threatened. You know, to say the desire is the cause of all suffering. That's self-centered pride. What is uh, you know, Step seven is humility, right? Step six is willingness. So the amazing grace of God being found in it. We talk, we read about the amazing graces when I, when I realized I had the source and power within me all the time, but I was burying it with the ego. It was there. I had it when I was a little child. I go out and play and enjoy life and be in the present. But, but I took it upon myself. And society, I look, I can't blame anybody but myself because even with the food addiction, with the corporations tell us and all these advertisements and the internet and TV, we're, we're, we're the ones who are taking it in. You know, nobody can make you do what you, if your thinking is stronger than anything. So we made a decision, made a decision that food was going to be, all these people addicted here, that food was going to be the answer. That was going to be our solution. We made that decision and we became addicted to it you know, in body, mind, and spirit. But that was a false god, right? False god. Food is a false god. Um, money's a false god. It brings just as much, the food is going to bring you and the money is going to bring you such as much devastation if you go after it in the wrong way. If you make it all about that, then you'll see somebody with a little bit more or you want a little bit more and the more you can't have enough, right? No matter how much you have of anything material, things of the flesh as it's called. So this whole world is what's called also. I love these quotes, sorry, sorry world. I mean, go out and enjoy the world, but understand the falseness of it. Understand the falseness when you have those big plates of food in front of you. Understand that that's the false thing. The truth, the truth is all you need. You don't have to resist it anymore. You have that perception change, like I'm saying, even with the water here, this alone during the week. You start getting that perception change and don't want, I always call those gloopy drinks. If you don't want those gloopy, you know, People, I always say, have different types of diets. They're talking about high carb, low carb, you know, uh, protein diets, this and that. To me, it's not so much on what the food is; it's what you put on it, right? I do eat a plant, whole food place diet. If anybody's interested in knowing what I do, but uh, God's gift from the ground—that's what I do. And but the thing is, this is that it's all that salt, oil, and sugar. SOS, they called it. You know, it's called the standard American diet. SAD, sad American diet. That's the, the acronym, sad. SAD. You know, so we have another way of um, 
Or how about mad, modern American diet? That's the other one. So, you know, that, that's what we're into. But we didn't have, you know, I mean, years ago, before they had all this advertisement, people weren't. So it shows the perception change, you know. Some people restrict food. We have anorexic bulimia. It's all related to the addiction to food. But think about that for a minute, right? If one time you have a m- mindset that you're not interested in the food, and the next time it's all about the food, so it's all a perception. It's perception. But we can have that change, and the only way to do it is we can't do it. We can't do it, no matter how much we try, whatever we did. I have another reading here about all the things people do, the the scientists, the pills, the medications, the stomach surgery, the diets, the thousands of diets. So, you know, these steps in this program, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, people talk about all these different types of therapy, but one guy told me, he was a professional, and he said that the AA is the best form of it, changing the per- thinking, the thinking process, and having that new perception about life. Being reborn, it says it right there on page 63. The new self comes in, and it's pretty amazing, the amazing grace. Do you follow what the amazing grace is? I mean, it's just something that comes into you and fills you with the understanding that all of these things, the five senses, are just a material thing, and it brings you back into the self or the material things. You know, we could be rocketed. It's so true. By these steps in this program, if we bring them into our heart, and it says here, though, a price had to be paid. We talked about that earlier, and the price is getting rid of selfish and self-centeredness. Getting rid of Bob. I had to get rid of Bob to let the real... Look, there's really two sides to us. There's a lower level thinking that has to do with the ego and the self, which brings us into those lower, you know, the, oh, the pride, the envy, the jealousy. Those are the sins. That's lower level. That's why they call it here the bedevilments. Let me read that and then we'll go on. I want to hear the shares and we can get right to that. But why is it called the bedevilments? It's things from low level thinking uh, that is on page 52. So the vocabulary we use here, bedevilments, it's the devil, right? It's the, you want to have higher consciences, be happy, joyous, and free and feel joy. You want to have compassion, love, and understanding for people. It'll come automatically, it says in the 10 step promises, not even having to swear it off point of neutrality but anyway on page 52 it says we were having trouble with our personal relationships we couldn't control our emotional natures we were in the self in the depression the anxiety remorse the shame the guilt we were prey to misery and depression that's what that is misery and depression when we get into the self we couldn't make a living we had a feeling of uselessness we're full of fear we were unhappy we couldn't seem to be of real help to other people. We couldn't get out of our own way. We couldn't have, but but on page, if we go to page 20, after Bill goes through the steps, what does Bill say on page 20? Uh, and it's called, it's called In the Solution. Uh, actually, there is a solution. Let's go to that on page 25. Okay. There we go. There is a solution, page 25. Almost none of us like the self-searching, the leveling of our pride. When we get humble and humility, you know, it's just amazing. The confession of our shortcomings, which the process requires for successful consummation, but we saw it really worked in others. You know, people of a lot of religious faiths, and they, they use that expression, being reborn and thinking. It's a perception change. It's just saying that the falseness of life is coming from the self and the ego. But we, and then it goes on to say, had come to believe in the hopelessness and futility of life as we had been living it. See, so you have to ask yourself, how's it working out for you up till now? I finally hit bottom and I surrendered and that amazing grace comes in. And you want to know something? During the day when the amazing grace isn't there, we have a solution. I say, Bob, you're getting back into the self again, self-centeredness. You know, and then all of a sudden I just read something here, like I'm just reading here. The amazing grace comes in. It's just letting go of the self. And it says, when therefore we approach by those in whom the problem have been solved. So what is your problem? A lot of you are here for addictions, right? Alcohol, drugs, and food addictions. And the other one, which is really related to the same thing, is you're you're being miserable with because resentment. That right has to do with people. You're addicted to people wanting to be right, the pride wanting them to respect you. And that always ends in in devastation, right? And uh, we found much, uh, okay, I'm going to end with this and then we'll hear the shares. We found much of heaven and we had been rocketed into what I like to call the fourth dimension of existence, which we had not even dreamed. It's really true. All this is true. Get out of the self, get out of your own way. It's really, really, really true. 
But when we're brought up in a secular society, which, you know, it's all about the self, uh, the ego. Uh, you're taught that as children, you know, get, be more successful, get better grades, be good in sports or whatever. And then uh, that's where you're going to find your joy and happiness. It fails every time. You could be just as happy sitting here, hit it on your couch, sitting there on your couch as somebody who goes out and tries to take on the whole world. Climbs Mount Everest, right? We always talk about that. So it's the same thing that guy said. I could sit on my couch. The guy spends all his time trying to climb Mount Everest. He says, I'll sit on my couch. And that's, he said, but that's the real joy. He says, the person who travels all around the world and climbs Mount Everest, they get pleasure, momentary pleasure. Sometimes people achieve the lottery, whatever it is, and they're happy for what, 10 minutes, 15? If they're happy for two weeks or a year, but then it causes them misery because their mindset is, how sorry do we have to feel for them because they're thinking that that's going to have to win another lottery or whatever it is. It talks about that amazing grace. It's very, very possible. And why do we do everything? Why do we eat all that food? Why do we take drugs, alcohol? Why do we achieve in life? We want to be happy. That's why people do things. But we have a solution, a way of happiness which is more blissful and joyful. The other is momentary pleasure. So if you want to be happy for a moment, go climb Mount Everest, go win the lottery, spend your whole life focusing on that, being miserable. Once you'll get it, you'll realize how really miserable you are because you'll say, well, what happened? I wasted my whole life try, you know, going around trying to please people, trying to find my answer in addictions. The real answer is in here. But God gave us his intellectual gift Maybe use it to see how to go on to a Zoom meeting to figure that out. But we try to figure out life. We can't because we're the, we're the, our mind is what created the problem. But the solution is, you know, it's just like, I use the analogy with sports. It's like being in the zone. When we're trying to control things, it's like trying to catch a baseball and trying to figure out where to put your hands, whatever. Or hit a baseball, a golf ball, whatever it is. But we have a, a, a steps here, this program, which is based on all the major religions and philosophies. It's not just some cult. It says after that, these were revolutionary and drastic proposals. So in our life, Bill says on page 13, common sense becomes uncommon sense. We, we can't imagine in our lives that that's the solution. We think because of secular society materialism, we got to figure it out. We got to get better grades. We got to get make more money, be successful. The intellect, the animal. How about with the Freudian? The, you know, we talked about Roland Hazard went all the way to Europe, and that's the, the time. And if, today, even psychoanalysis trying to analyze something, right? Trying to figure it out. So that's the way I was brought up, and try by self will. I can do this. I can figure it out. But you ask yourself with the diets. If anybody's not agreeing with what I'm saying, how's it been working out for you? When you try to figure it out by these corporations, the billion dollar corporations, and you pay thousands of dollars and they send you little morsels of food, all the poison in them. Your perception still is you dying for the food, you're still miserable because you haven't changed your perception, but you're trying to control it. But what you're doing is you're, you're being in the problem. You follow that? In other words, as soon as you say, I'm going to control it this way, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you're in the problem because you're making it more real. The more we fight, something the more real we're making we'll say hey this is a real problem just like if you have somebody you have resentment towards and you want to argue with you're saying to yourself it's really true that i have to convince them and show them i'm right so you're in the problem That's right the more you tell people this per person other person's the problem you're in the problem the solution is when we get scented we have all compassion and love humility so somebody could win every argument in the world and we don't care but you know what when you win an argument, you're just, you're just winning the battle, but you're losing the war. You want to win the war? You know, have God, we talk about amazing grace, and that's God consciousness, love and tolerance for people. Hurt people hurt people. Just remember that. I, I, diets are easy. I mean, I, I went on a thousand of them, right? It's no problem going on a diet. It's just staying with it because the perception changed. And not only that, I went on a diet, a gray sheet diet for a year, and and I lost all the weight and I got to my goal weight. But the problem was I was miserable every day. And, you know, you ask yourself, first of all, 95% of diets fail. And the 5% the that succeeded and are on these stupid programs, I shouldn't call them stupid, but, you know, it really is. But they, they, they're miserable. So we want to be miserable your whole life. We, in AA, we, people come in, they, they didn't want to work to step in this program. They were, they were miserable. They say dry drunks, we call it. So actually, when you're on these diets, you're like a dry food addict. So only, the only answer, the doctor's opinion and um, 
and throughout the book and we agnostics there's all, and all throughout it it's just say there's only one solution it's spiritual and if you don't believe that how come all the uh, mod- they said back then the scientists couldn't figure it out but how come today they still haven't figured it out they haven't figured out the solution to alcoholism my drug addiction <laughs> I go to me and nobody likes me they don't like the way I dress whatever if we get centered, what it, 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 it's it's the self. The, the happiness is in here. If we're looking on the outside, Jesse, it's 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 terrible. You're gonna end up uh, being miserable, depressed, anxious. You know. Think about that. Think of the worst. That's why I said bring up the worst thing. Look, we can even accept our own death, but when we have expectations, I, I'm not gonna live to a hundred. You know. I mean, uh, how many more years? So my I'm, I'm gonna my, if my expectations were, I'd be depressed right now. So when we get out of self and there's no more self left, then what do we have to fear? And fear causes, the self-centered fear causes all this misery and depression and upset and these addictions and problems. But if I sit here and say, I don't care if nobody likes me, I don't care if I die right now, if I'm out of the self, that's why I say the worst problem you have. Anybody else has the the worst problem? What is it? (laughs) 